Hi, my name is Jennifer Jacobson, and I'm the Chief Financial Officer at Evergreen Public Schools. And I'm here today to share preliminary budget information for the 23-24 school year. Um, so we already shared this information with the board and our union partners at a board work session that was on December 13th. So just to preface the school district budgets are very complex, so I'll try to keep this um, at a higher level and keep it brief and not get too far into the details here. Um, there is additional budget information out on our fiscal services website, including the 22-23 FY95 budget and supplement, as well as the 21-22 FY96 financial statements and board presentation. Uh, I'm also putting together some frequently asked questions as well. All right, so to, uh, the agenda for this presentation is to explain the purpose of sharing this information and the big picture related to the district's financial status going into the 23-24 school year, along with the major budget drivers and factors that impact the budget. I'll also talk about the revenues and expenditures and how we have determined there will be a budget shortfall for 23-24. Um, so the purpose of this presentation is to engage in a stakeholder process to guide our budget reductions. So we plan to launch a community survey called the Thought Exchange at the end of January in order to gather input and feedback to incorporate into our budget decisions. Um, the areas taken into consideration during the development of the budget include stakeholder feedback, prioritizing these key functions, aligning our resources to the strategic plan, and then following our legal and contractual obligations. All right, there are a lot of factors that impact the budget. Um, all of these we have to take projected um, uh, calculations uh, into account when we're looking at 23-24. So there are a lot of variables that impact the bottom line. Um, I'd like to focus here on levy equalization, ESSER funds, and enrollment. These all have a major factor um, impact on next year's budget. So for levy equalization, we are projecting a significant decrease in levy equalization funds over the next couple of years. Uh, these funds are distributed by the state to equalize uh, levy funds across districts, and uh, it's they're really contingent on two uh, multiple factors, but primarily enrollment and our assessed valuation across our region compared to that of the state. So we have experienced a pretty significant enrollment decline, and our local property assessed values have increased over the last couple of years. And so those two things taken together are going to have a, a major impact on those equalization funds to the tune of several million dollars. Um, as far as our ESSER funds, these are federal grant funds that we were awarded in order to address the pandemic. So they're one-time funds uh, that will be depleted during the 23-24 school year. So that's the extent of the grant. Uh, the funds have been spent on a variety of expenditures, including PPE, tech devices for students, enhanced cleaning, um, and a lot of staffing to address learning loss and summer school as well. <clears throat> so those will be spent out at the end of 23-24. Um, lastly, enrollment, it also has a significant impact on budget, and we've experienced a decrease in our student enrollment of 14% over the last seven years, so the majority of our funding, almost 90% of it, is affected by the number of students we serve, so this decrease has had a major impact on our resources. Um, I also want to point out the state legislative session will be conducted from January through mid-March, and the bu budget decisions they make at the state level can have significant like as well for the school district. Um, this slide just shows uh, all of the programs here at Evergreen. And um, we've recently shared the same budget information with the directors over all of these programs. And we're, we're uh, attempting to create a collaborative process across our programs where we hope to find efficiencies across the district. So just a reminder, we are a large district and it's very complex and we're trying to get all the people at the table to you know, find uh, different areas where we can find cost savings. Um, this is a condensed version of the budget timeline. In January, we plan to share information with our stakeholders and principals, and we plan to launch a thought exchange to gather input. In February, we put together the forecast uh, for enrollment, and that drives our certificated staffing levels at the schools. 
Um, so during that time, district leadership will weigh the input that we're gathering from directors and principals and community and staff and um, prioritize our reductions and translate those to recommendations for the budget reductions. These will be shared with the board in March. <clears throat> in April, we'll be putting the budget together for schools and departments uh, before the May 15th reduction in force deadline. And then in August, there's a public hearing and adoption of the final budget. So it's a rather uh, lengthy process we go through to put uh, this complicated of a budget together. All right, so where does the money go? This is a question that uh, I think a lot of people are interested in. And um, so this slide gives a breakdown of the expenditures for the 21-22 school year. So we just closed the books out. This was part of my financial statement presentation in December. Um, total expenditures last year were a little over $400 million. So that's just for general fund day-to-day -day operations of the district. Uh, it doesn't include our capital projects fund, which is a completely separate fund. It's held distinctly, distinctly for building new schools and the modernization of buildings. So I've given some detail on the bottom on what each category consists of. Um, and if you look at the certificated salaries plus the classified salaries and benefits, the, these two together account for over 85% of our total expenditures. And then I'd also like to point out, if you look at the um, green circle on the right, uh, we have contracted services for food services and custodial services. So those are primarily for a staffing. So our food services and custodians are out at all of our buildings, and that's another over 4% of our budget. So if you add those indirect uh, staffing costs with our direct classified and certs costs, we're up to almost 90% of our budget now is, is concentrated on staffing. Um, other purchase services, those include things like utilities, insurance, um, student device lease payments, and 4.4% uh, of the total budget makes uh, is for supplies. So these are mostly building budgets, curriculum, uh, fuel is included there. That's over a million dollars a year for our transportation department. And then travel and capital is just a very small percentage of our total expenditures. All right, I'm going to just talk on a very high level a little bit about the prototypical schools funding model. This is the primary way districts across the state are funded. Um, so allocations for staff are based on our total number of students served. Our basic education staff include classroom teachers, principals, paraeducators, and secretaries, as well as the central office staff like payroll and fiscal services. So based on the 22-23 enrollment, the state has allocated $157 million to pay for those basic ed staff members. But you can see the actual cost for the current year is $225 million. So that leaves us with a deficit of $68.4 million to cover with other funding sources out state, outside of those state portion of funds. So currently the legislature has not made a final decision on what uh, inflationary factor they'll use for 23, 24. So we have to just use uh, estimates for now. So presuming they use say a 5% inflationary factor, when you apply that to our current staff and then our state funding, you see that gap increases. So we go from a $68 million deficit to a $71.8 million um, deficit for unfunded salaries. And so that's an increase of 3.4 million that we have to cover with levy or other types of local funding. So how do we cover those unfunded salary and benefits? In the current 22-23 year, we use a combination of levy funds, levy equalization, um, ESSER funds, and our other local funds. So just a reminder, our ESSER funds are one-time funds. When they run out next year, uh, they're gone. Um, levy equalization also, we're, we're uh, calculating a significant decrease as well for levy equalization. So those cover our current year unfunded expenditures, which include those basic ed salary and benefits I pointed out, as well as special education uh, and then overages in our transportation and English language learner program. So this next graph 
um, shows a four-year bar chart. So this is attempting to capture that information I just shared about those unfunded expenses and how we've paid for them in the past. So this is looking over four years. Um, the peach and green bars show the revenue and the blue bars show the unfunded expenditures. Um, in 21-22, on the left-hand side, you can see we received enrollment stabilization funds of $14 million along with ESSER funds, and those helped cover those unfunded salary and benefits, as well as the transportation and special ed pieces. Um, we knew in 21-22 that those stabilization funds were just one-time funds. We weren't going to receive them again in 22-23, so we made um, um, about $20 million in budget reductions in order to obtain a balanced budget for 22-23. So you can see here where we only had the ESSER funds then to help cover those um, costs. And so as we go into 23-24, you can see that we have another, um, we're faced with another budget reduction year. As the ESSER funds are being depleted, um, we're facing approximately $17.5 million in further budget reductions for next year. So this is just meant to show a vis visualization of the decreasing revenues that we face as our ESSER funds are expended and our levy equalization and enrollment are both decreasing. So this is just a very high level summary of those major budget factors I just explained that contribute to that $17.6 million deficit. So there is, again, a decline in levy equalization in ESSER funds and then the increased costs of those unfunded salary and benefits. And then my last slide, um, this is information uh, that is available on the OSPI website, and it shows our staffing levels at Evergreen over the last seven years. Um, the blue bars show the decrease in student FTE over these years, which has decreased a total of 14%, with a pretty significant drop during the pandemic. Um, we've been fortunate to receive ESSER and stabilization funds for the last couple of years so we could keep our staffing levels pretty consistent and help cope with the impact of the pandemic on our student body. However, as the ESSER funds are depleted, we'll need to find other ways to cut costs in order to balance our budget in future years. So this is all of the information I plan to share at this time. I hope you found this helpful in understanding our budget shortfall that we're facing going into 23-24. Um, please, please feel free to email me with any questions and I appreciate your time. Have a good day.